the famously known unbeatable Iron Jacket, a fierce Comanche chief was brutally killed in the Battle of Antelope Hills. The Texas Rangers soon realized Iron Jacket had planned to take them all down with him. The battle was not over yet, it was only the beginning. On May 12, 1858, the Battle of Little Rogue Creek, also known as the Battle of Antelope Hills, took place. It was a sequence of three consecutive battles on a single day between the Comanches and the Texas Rangers, militia and allied Tonkawas. In the late 1850s, the Texas Rangers proceeded to push their colonies towards the Comanche heartland, the Comanchera. Important Indian hunting ground areas were destroyed and grazed habitat for the Comanche horse herds was lost. The Comanche saw their Comancheria territory being encroached upon by Anglo-Texas immigrants, so they retaliated with a series of savage and murderous attacks into Texas. Texas Governor Hardin Runnels campaigned for office in 1856 on a promise of ending the raid. Governor Runnels appointed John Salmon Ford, a veteran ranger of the Mexican-American War, as captain of the Texas Ranger, and gave him the task of carrying the battle on the Comanche in the heartland of their homeland, in the Comancheria. Governor Runnels issued explicit orders to Ford. I impress upon you the necessity of action and energy. Follow any trail and all trails of hostile or suspected hostile Indians you may discover and if possible overtake and chastise them if unfriendly. The governor's orders were straightforward and Ford planned to fulfill them. First Encounter On May 12, 1858, before daybreak, Ford's troops assaulted the first Comanche camp they encountered at Antelope Hills on Little Rogue Creek in the heart of the Comancheria. Ford's rangers brutally assaulted the fleeing Comanche with their pistols, killing every warrior and countless women and children in the process. According to some historians, this was a massacre in which a sleeping town was assaulted, without notice, and the residents massacred. Second Encounter Ford's troops advanced and assaulted a relatively large encampment of roughly 70 to 100 huts further upriver. Luckily for the Comanche, after the first dawn attack on the single campsite, a warrior observed the Texan soldiers moving upriver and rode quickly to notify the bigger town. As a result, the Comanche were able to take a defensive position, protecting their women and children at the expense of many warriors' deaths. Iron Jacket, his name was derived from his propensity of entering combat wearing a Spanish iron armor, which shielded him from most light weapon fire. Iron Jacket, who was in his 60s at the time, had ridden straight in front of the invading rangers and Indians, daring them to fight one-on-one. -on -one. While this had succeeded in past engagements against the rangers, who lacked the formidable weaponry capable of penetrating the armor he wore. This time it was a different story. Iron Jacket was killed after repeatedly riding down the fire line of rangers and Tonkawa, mocking them. Many historians believe the armor that shielded him from light weapons, fire, simply could not protect him against Tonkawa's buffalo rifle, Jim Pockmark. His demise caused great grief among his troops. But it was not over yet. Third Encounter After the death of Iron Jacket, Ford's lieutenants anticipated him to assault the outnumbered warriors soon. They imagined they could kill them, catch or murder the fleeing women and children, and proceed upriver. But Ford ordered his men to hold their positions. Ford had noticed activity in the hills above Little Rogue Creek and suspected a big army of Indians was on its way. Iron Jacket had dispatched messengers to warn and call assistance, particularly to the nearby encampment headed by his son, Pita Nokona. Pita Nokona arrived with at least 500 warriors, recognizing that his warriors' bows and lances could not compete at close quarters with the rangers' revolvers, and not wanting to repeat his father's mistake, Pita Nokona tried to draw them into the forest surrounding Little Rogue Creek, where the Comanche's famous skill on horseback and with bows and lances could be put to use. With the trees negating some of the advantages of the Texans' superior firepower, even after drawing the rangers into the woods, the rangers had outnumbered in terms of firepower. Pita Noncona and his troops retreated from the onslaught of lethal pistol fire. Pita Noncona had no plans of leaving his soldiers exposed to a barrage of repeating guns. As a result, instead of standing to battle in response to Ford's attack, the Comanche withdrew. At that moment, the action had developed into a chaotic running war spanning many miles, negating most of the Texans' massed firepower. The Battle of Little Rogue Creek was a major defeat for the Texas Rangers, and it highlighted the strength and resilience of the Comanche tribe. Despite being outnumbered and outgunned, the Comanche were able to hold their own against the Rangers, and even inflict heavy losses. 
That's all for today, guys. Subscribe for more videos on the history of Native American tribes.